Welcome to our podcast series Inside Semicon, and in today's episode, we will be discussing the server industry and what this means for the future of data and the environment. Hi, John. Good to see you again. Thanks, Tom. Thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in again. Um, my name's Tom, Tom Milders. Uh, I'm your host for today. I'm here with John today. John, um, today we're going to talk about servers. Correct. Yeah. So what exactly do we mean when we say servers? Okay. So I suppose I'd have to tie servers in with the, the semiconductor industry. Mm -hmm, and exactly. as usual, I have my little bag of tricks, Tom. So I'm going to uh, to dive into my bag of tricks here. One second. I start pulling things out here. So what I have here and what I'll show is basically this is an old drive. So you can see this, Tom, so just as you hang. You can see, that you can feel the weight. Quite heavy, that. yeah. Yeah. And basically this is, it's an old drive and the size of this is 120 gigabytes. So on, on something this, this large, so it's probably, I don't know, what would that be? Well, I was say in terms of inches, but in terms of centimeters, it's maybe, you know. 20? 20, yeah. 20 so by 10. That's something. quite a large, yeah. a large product, as you can see. Yeah. So. That's what data was, was stored in. And I'm going to, you know, build up the story yeah. here. So just give me one second. So. And then obviously, as semiconductors improved, we then went to the famous thumb drive, you know, which is basically, again, something this small. And this one has, my eyesight is failing me. It's, I think that says 16 gigabytes, Tom. So that's 16 gig. Yeah. So you, now you can see that the difference between the thumb drive, which is literally the size of your thumb, from the original, you know, drive. We are now getting smaller and smaller again. This is all driving Semicon. And then the last one then is probably the latest one in terms of, you know, where we're getting to, which is why Semicon is inherently tied into servers. So then you have something this size. It's basically a little SD card that you put into your camera, your, you know, your home security system. And that is 64 gigabytes. And it, they can, you know, wow. that's, so you can actually get larger than that. So if you then kind of put that side by side to the first item that I took out, this is the size of your fingernail, literally it's the size of your fingernail. And when you compare that to the first one of 10 years ago, you can see how semiconductors has driven the server industry in terms of space. Wait, so the, the first one you pulled out, that's only 10 years old? It's about 10, 10, 15 wow. years old, yeah. So that, and that's that was, a massive difference. It is. And you can see then what happens then is that semiconductors, because they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller, it actually means we can store more and more and more. But then the inverse question is, well, what are we putting on that? You know, how is that affecting the, the supply chain? How does that affect our customers and our consumers? And it's been driven by the amount of data that we consume as individuals, as human beings, but also um, electric vehicles. I mean, electric vehicles are generating, you know, an, an awful lot of, you know, terabytes of data. Tesla does something like three or 32 terabytes a week. And Facebook as one social media platform does 52,000 data points per person. And if you multiply all the people just on, you know, Facebook, and then you cut across TikTok and Instagram and various others, you see that we become really data hungry. And that's what's driving the servers because this has to be stored somewhere. So if you want access to understand, you know, what makes the car better to drive and how it can distinguish between a cow and a cat or, you know, a truck and a train and a, a car, then these data points are needed continually. And this is what's driving the, the servers because they need to store that, that data. But then that inversely, well, it needs space. And then if it needs space, it generates heat. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the things then as well, that's also a byproduct. Um, and to, I was reading it that in Ireland, from the Central Statistics Office in Ireland, that 21% of the national grid energy, like 21% is now being used by data centers in Ireland. So that's like just a fifth of all the, you know, the uh, energy produced from the grid is being used for data servers. Wow. And that's, that's just for data servers, right? 
Yeah. That, wow. Yeah. And that's and, and I but then those data takes everything from it houses everything from, you know, the Facebook data points, fifty two thousand data points through to the electric vehicles. And if one one Tesla has so many terabytes, I think it's, it's thirty two, I could be wrong here, but I think it's thirty two a week. Sorry, two terabytes for one car a week. Imagine how many different electric vehicles are out there continually uploading and downloading, updating and, you know, and then, uh, and all of this as well as pumping into to AI, which is also driving it further. But the power consumption needed is also means that it's environmentally, is it sustainable? And that's kind of in the next question is, you know, how do we get into a sustainable area with semiconductors? And as long as we keep requiring more and more information, we're going to keep requiring more and more space, more and more semiconductors, more and more heat, more and more electricity being generated to power these devices, these servers, these big server farms. Wow. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about the logistics side of servers. So how does a company like Kunanaho deal with these uh, um companies that run these servers. So you probably have maybe, I'd say, you know, f at the moment there's probably five, everybody kind of would know, you know, the big five names of, you know, what they do and, you know, and who they are, because they're probably household names. They would have originally started out in the laptop industries. They would originally have started out as like, um, you know, business machines. And basically they have gone into this area because it's a big growth area. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, and we've seen this explosion in terms of, um, you know, data points being collected and, and electric vehicles is actually driving this. The next one that's driving it is, is is AI, obviously. You need a lot more processing power. But in terms of logistics, you know, we need to move these servers from point A to point B because they're manufactured somewhere, then they need to go into a, a data server farm. And that can be quite a complex supply chain. Um, in terms of handling, it would not, you know, need the same, you know, um, amount of, how to say, um, touch points, as we say, semiconductor, where you have different, you know, light, heat, humidity, et cetera, et cetera, because you're still shipping a rack, but you are shipping, you know, uh, quite heavy and quite um, uh, power hungry devices. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they, while they are robust and they're inside in the, in the case, you still do have to watch, you know, the, the heat, that's why heat generation is, is so important with, with regard to data centers. So for us, we need to make sure that the products get there, that is handled correctly, um, that's unloaded correctly, that's put in place correctly. And then obviously we have to ensure that all the packaging and so on also comes back. So we do have a kind of end-to-end -end supply chain there that we look after it from point A to point B. But also we have the ability to to think ahead and not just say, you know, drop the server rack, which is it's just a big rack with one of those devices. I've shown you know, a couple of hundred of them in there because obviously they're all packed and the packaging obviously needs to come back, which is part of the sustainability um, element that we would um, also provide to our customers. Talking about sustainability, um, the environment. So these, the, the server industry in general, but specifically, you know, moving these servers around, how do we try and mitigate the impact on the environment? The, the best way for doing that probably is because you need to get the product from A to B, then you are looking at how do you move it? So you have various, you know, methodologies of moving it. So obviously at any point there are touch points, but then instead of say, you know, air freighting it in, Maybe you can do a sea air or an air sea part, you know, within within the leg of the shipment. The last mile delivery, you know, it's often forgotten about because it, when it does land at an airport, it needs to be moved to the end location, which is nearly 100% of the times is on some sort of a vehicle, whether it's a, you know, um, a 40 foot truck or it could be just, you know, spare parts or whatever. So to to be more sustainable in that area, then moving it the last mile, let's call it the last mile, could be done with an electric vehicle. And then we are contributing now because we're using electric vehicles, which is using so many terabytes a week. We're now contributing to the need for extra data centers. So you can see that it's a chicken and egg situation. Yeah. So we're kind of creating that as well, that, you know, everybody has their phones, everybody wants access to immediate information. So it's actually ourselves who are driving this need for data, data yeah. servers. I mean, go back in the 80s when I was growing up and I had, didn't have a mobile phone, data centers weren't really something that was talked about back yeah. then because there was no mobile phones. You just no need for it. There was no need for it. You went to the library, you yeah. know, you basically walked or cycled to the library and then you came out. Now you've everything accessible on, on your phone. Yeah. But to do that, that information needs to be stored somewhere electronically, right. which is in a data center. 
right? And just to make the connection with AI and with mm. cloud computing and everything, that's all done in data centers, right? So these data centers, they're not only growing massively, they're also um, changing out their uh, their microchips, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and from what I've uh, read online, uh, these new chips, they also require way more energy uh, to run, right? Because there's more computing power that they're, yeah, that they're generating. Um, how how are these companies trying to offset that need for energy? It's, it's going to be kind of hard because you're done down to the fundamentals and the basics of how a semiconductor works. But in kind of layman's terms, we basically have like one layer. So we're not actually getting into the area of being able to stack these chips on top of each other, on top of a, a yeah. silicon device. So you just have, you know, one processor but you can't stack four, five, six on top of each other within the design. So we're still limited in what we can do in terms of, you know, like 3D. We are researching it, not, not you know, um, not, not us, you, not, not me personally, but yeah. there are companies out there that are really putting a lot of effort and money into this yeah. to, to, to reduce the power consumption because then you can actually go vertical in terms of just having everything on one level. Mm -hmm. So that's one. The second thing is to have low power consumption, but then there's new materials needed. Um, and really... It could be that we are over engineering, so we're using, you know, um, chips basically that are overpowered for what they need to do. There's a lot of redundancy in there. So if we actually went the way of um, having more AI to actually say, well, we don't need this part of the equation, we can focus on just what we want. And the other data can be kind of left to the side. It would then mean that there's less accessing of the, of the, you know, mm -hmm. the hard drives on the servers. Um, and if it's um, you know, quantified better, like in a library, yeah. you know, you can imagine like if you want a book in a library and you end up walking around for 12 hours trying to find, you know, something specific you want to book. read, a specific yeah. book. But if you know where it is, it's very efficient to go in, go to that section, pull it out, take it and you have your book. Right. As opposed to actually walking down every single aisle looking for that one piece of information. Wow. But that's something that we, you know, that the, the programming, the coding behind that is also why in the server rack you not only have massive amounts of data storage, massive amount of hard disks storing, you also have coding behind that. So, uh, you know, making it kind of easy and simple, you might have one hard disk that says, you know, this is a cow, four legs and a head, this is a dog, but this is this this these dogs are kept on this particular location. So then when it comes to someone says like, you know, I want to know what a cow is, it'll go straight to the that section of the library where it knows where cows are. As an example, it's probably not a very good one, but it's about the best I can yeah, put yeah. together and, you know, in, in layman's terms, but there's a lot goes on behind in terms of how the data is accessed, how fast is accessed, you know, and, and also how clean the data is. Wow. So actually they're using the new, the newest technology, the AI technology to uh, make their own process for uh, um, storing and making data accessible, they're yeah, making that correct. more efficient. Yeah, the indexing of, I think is the, the technical yeah. term, the indexing of it. So, and that's where the AI can do the indexing better. So you don't have to, if you're looking for something on your, you know, your, your, your laptop, you just go straight to the folder. But imagine if you didn't have folders, it, it's yeah. on, it's on your hard drive. Somewhere. Somewhere. And then you have to go access it. But if everything is indexed and foldered, yeah. then you can see that you even like you're actually doing the AI element for your, your laptop. You're actually putting things into folders yourself yeah. and you know where it is. But that's why I can never work with somebody else's Excel spreadsheets because their brain works that, for them. And if I try to access something in their Excel spreadsheets, I can't follow their train of thought and it works vice versa. Yeah. So you can see there that actually having that um, ability to index it and having a, a one overarching generic system controlling that would make it way more um, efficient in terms of where you get your data and where you get, you get access to it. Okay. So I was just wondering uh, recently, let's say Kunal delivers one of these servers, server racks to a data center. Yeah. Is it simply plug and play or how does that, is there a certain install time? Yeah, correct. I mean, uh, it wouldn't be as bad as say you know, with, this, with, the, with the semiconductor piece of CapEx. However, you know, when you do actually bring it in, there will be the engineer from the, um, the server company there. So obviously then they have to, to build it up, they have to run it up, they have to check all the connections. So depending on what they're putting in and how complex it is, because they also have to network it because you're mm. putting in one server into a bank of servers. So now it now needs to start sharing data as well across other servers and be accessible. 
So you have the whole networking of it going on, you know, and then you have the power to it. So there's quite a, um, a large element of manual, if I can use that term, like manual labor to go yeah. in. You, it's not just a plug and play. Right. Because you still have to, you know, check all the data connections, make sure everything is running. Um, I was I used the word spin up, but that's an old term when you actually had a hard drive that had a magnetic disc. Yeah. And you, it was like a record player. And you had a, over the hard disc was a little, you know, um, reader. Yeah. And it actually spun and, you know, you could read from it, but you would actually boot up, I suppose would be the proper terms today. You would boot up that server and then run your checks and make sure that everything is working and that, you know, the, the heat and so on is, is good. Because you can never tell exactly when it arrives to the location and things are plugged in. Sometimes you you may, you know, things don't always go right. Right. But these these engineers or these uh, um, uh, technicians, they're, mm -hmm. they're waiting there, right? They're waiting yeah. for that server rack. Correct, yeah. So that just emphasizes how important it is for us as a logistics firm yeah. that we're uh, making sure that that specific server is on time mm -hmm. um, and it also arrives in good condition. So we're monitoring that shipment constantly am i right there yeah so like from point a to point b so when it's you know ordered to delivered i mean you you need to be there you can't be there ahead of the engineer because then you know it's going to sit there and wait and an engineer's time is, is installation engineer's time is actually you know time is money and the company who was ordered it wants it in as soon as possible so we really have to ensure that the the logistics also takes into account the, the human element which is you know can we get this to the, the correct location on the correct street or if it's up, you know, one or two or three flights sometimes. It could be a research lab in, you know, a university, which needs to be, mm, you know, three, four flights up, you know, and something as simple as, is the elevator big enough? Yeah. You know, these kind of things then come into effect. So not only are you putting them into data centers, but you're putting them into research labs and you really need to understand, you know, what the customer requirements, but what the end game is. So where will it actually sit if it's just going into a data center? they probably are pretty smooth in terms of their, you know, they can just literally, it's on wheels, they can literally wheel it in, plug it in. They've done it a couple of hundred thousand times, no issues. But if you have a research lab that's suddenly coming up to speed, then you have to figure out logistically, you know, it's easy to get it from the plane, it's easy to get it onto the truck, it's easy to get it off the truck, but how do I get it up four flights and there's no lift? Yeah. Because somebody didn't actually look at the end-to-end -end supply chain, which is why it's so important. Yeah. So recapping what we've discussed, right? We've discussed you know, the link between uh, the server industry and the semiconductor industry. Mm -hmm. We've discussed the importance of logistics just in time yep. um, and also monitoring those shipments, right? Yep. When it comes to humidity, temperature control, yep. that kind of stuff, if needed. Um, we've discussed the environmental impact and the way we're trying to you know, mitigate. mitigate that, yep. that uh, alongside the, the server industry, which are doing their own thing. Yeah. Um, have, have we missed anything anything else that people listening in should should realize about the server industry? I think the, the one thing that people need to be aware of is we are generating this, you know, our need for information. You know, it's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just, you know, where we are at this point. Our need for information and our need to have access, immediate access to everything is what's actually driving the need for these huge data centers. Um, and... Like I said, just, you know, on Facebook alone, 52,000 data points per person for every person that's on, you know, um, on Facebook. And that's just one media. Yeah. And again, the EV car. So, you know, we're actually uh, contributing to this, you know, massive growth in, 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 the, in the server business. And we're contributing to these data centers. So it's, it's our use of, of equipment all the time. We're wanting to be online all the time. So it's how we're evolving, it's how we're progressing. And technology has to keep up and it has to actually overtake us to, to mitigate you know, the heat, the power consumption, um, and everything that's um, a bad side effect of having such a, a large consumer of electricity. Yeah, All right. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming today. Really you appreciate your, uh, your insights on this. Thank you. See you next time. All right, see you next time. Thanks for listening to today's podcast, Inside Semiconductors and the Semiconductor Supply Chain. If you found any of the topics we discussed interesting and you want to find out more, you can find me on LinkedIn at John Desmond or go to Kuhn & website. 